Hello, are you interested in technology that could be behind the racing uh, events such as Formula One, NASCAR racing, Moto Grand Prix, or that can also be used for esports? Today we will talk about motorsports telemetry with a focus on how to code a processing pipeline. This is Fireside Chats by Delta 3 Innovation Lab. I'm Clemente Giorio and my co-speaker is Gianni Rosa Gallina. Hello everybody, welcome to the new session from our uh, lab. Our special guest is Paolo Patierno. Hello Paolo. Hi guys, thank you very much for being here. Paolo is a principal software engineer in Red Hat. Uh, Paolo, could you tell us more about uh, what do you do <laughs> every day? Yeah, so I am um, an engineer working um, in the messaging team in Red Hat, so mostly working on technology like uh, Kafka, for example, uh, that I'm going to use for my demo, uh, for the demo that I'm going to show to you today. And uh, yeah, I am really passionate about Formula One, so this is the reason why today I'm going to show this kind of demo using Formula One and telemetry things. I also like running like you, Clemente, right? And uh, yeah. yeah, swimming, so all the other kind of sports, let me say. Perfect. After your session, uh, will be a discussion panel also with uh, Sergio Capozzi. Hello, Hello Sergio. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Sergio he, uh, was a for is a former uh, principal uh, software engineer in a McLaren. Hello, Sergio. So, uh, let me remember you that uh, you can interact with us simply by leaving a comment. And uh, of course, uh, to answer you, uh, we uh, will collect all the uh, cool questions. And uh, during the discussion panel, we will talk together uh, about these uh, uh, questions, uh, trying to answer you. Paolo, are you ready to start? Yes, sure. Okay, let's go. So thank you very much, Clemente. So uh, as um, Clemente already mentioned, we are going to see a kind of demo that I built in my uh, spare time uh, as a passionate of a Formula One. But uh, in general, it's kind of a demo that you can apply and all the other kind of technologies that I'm going to show that you can apply on any kind of uh, motorsport. So how to uh, implement and develop a telemetry processing pipeline. Um, yeah, this is a little bit of introduction about me. I just forgot to mention that I am also Microsoft MVP for the Azure uh, technologies, uh, and I am maintainer for one of the projects that uh, I work every day, which is StreamZ, which is a CNCF project for running Apache Kafka on Kubernetes. Uh, I will introduce a little bit StreamZ in the next slides and also committer for some other projects, mostly related on the IoT, because in my previous life, I was an IoT uh, developer. So let's jump straight to the um, session. So uh, what I'm going to show is uh, how to build an event streams pipeline. So when we talk about uh, event streams pipeline, we talk about a kind of um, way for uh, getting events, processing events, and getting some insights from these events, right? So there are different problems that we are um, going to solve during this session. The first one is how to ingest the events. So you have events coming from uh, different sources. In this case, uh, we are talking about the telemetry events, so data coming from Formula One cars. And uh, we need a um, reliable way to ingest these events. So getting events, um, storing events, uh, all the kind of problems that are related to um, uh, getting events from sources and storing them. The next step, uh, which is kind of related to all the stuff around messaging uh, is about the integration between different systems. So it means that um, as uh, we will see uh, in our demo, the data are coming from um, a completely different systems that is able to talk a different protocol from the ingestion system. So in most of the cases, you need to uh, integrate different system talking different languages, so different protocols, like for example, ingestion on ODP and then providing output on some other kind of different uh, system as well. 
Next to it, we have uh, even the problem of um, uh, processing events in real time, because when you are ingesting events in real time, it's also mean that uh, you want to process these events in order to get some insights, so to get some uh, useful information in real time, but even making some decisions in real time or helping for making decisions in real time. Uh, so the fourth problem about getting uh, um, useful insights. So see, I don't know, uh, filtering some information on the data or getting some patterns on this data um, and uh, so on. Uh, last thing is about uh, deploying your pipeline. So where you should run and deploy this entire pipeline that is able to solve all these kind of problems. So moving forward, let me uh, introduce a little bit the three main technologies that I used during the, the demo. The first one is uh, Apache Kafka. So uh, Apache Kafka will help us to solve the first problem. So this is an ingestion system. It will be the ingestion system that I'm going to use for ingesting the telemetry data. So for people who don't know about uh, Kafka, Kafka um, was born a as a published subscribe messaging system. So uh, it can be used today as well as a messaging system where uh, you have some producers sending some messages to so-called topics, and you have one or more subscribers subscribed to these topics and getting the messages, right? But uh, over the time, Kafka um, uh, has evolved as a data streaming platform. So it's mostly used for uh, ingesting a lot of events, for storing these events, and for um, processing them in real time, even because we will see that the, the Kafka ecosystem is not just about the broker, but even some other projects around the broker itself. But in the end, what is Kafka? Kafka, in the end, is a commit log. So you can see it like a kind of um, set of files where uh, all the events are up and, and uh, are stored in the end of these logs. Uh, but it's made to be horizontally scalable, fault tolerant, and distributed by nature, which is not the same for all the other traditional messaging system. So this is kind of a little bit of a really quick introduction about what is uh, Kafka. Um, as you already mentioned, Kafka uh, was designed to be fast, scalable, durable, and available so that even if in your Kafka cluster you have one or more brokers down, because uh, Kafka is deployed by a cluster, a cluster is made by one or more different brokers uh, that share the, 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 low, the load coming from all the clients, um, of course, uh, it provides higher uh, availability so that if you have one or more brokers down, it depends on your topology, you can still continue to use uh, um, Kafka in order to send and receive messages. Of course, with some constraints, uh, there are some tuning that you have to do on the brokers, but it's yeah, it's kind of different discussion, not for this talk. Uh, it's the, uh, distributed by nature. Uh, it works uh, with data partitioning, which is the main thing that allows to uh, scale pretty well on the consumer side so that you can have a lot of consumers consuming the same data on different topics. So there is this uh, virtual thing, which is a topic made by different partitions. So actually the clients use the partitions for sending and receiving messages. And the partitions are, are also replicated on different brokers. So that if, uh, as you already mentioned, if one broker goes down, you have the data replicated on the other nodes and you can continue to use your topics for sending and receiving messages. It provides high throughput and low latency, but as I already mentioned before, Kafka is not just about the broker. It's even um, a uh, wider ecosystem. So on the right-hand side, you can see, for example, the consumer and the producer API, which is um, the, the, the library that provides the API for sending and receiving messages through Kafka. There is also the streams API that um, I'm going to use during this demo, which is a kind of higher level on top of consumer and producer for providing uh, um, processing, uh, real-time processing on the streams of events in Kafka. There are also some other components like Mirror Maker, which is useful for mirroring your Apache Kafka cluster from one data center to another, for example, for um, uh, disaster recovery. 
uh, that could be a use case of using Mirror Maker. And uh, there is Kafka Connect, which is used for uh, bridging data through different systems uh, through Kafka, like, for example, from a database to another or from NQTT broker to uh, a database uh, using Kafka topics and so on. And yeah, Kafka is an upstream project. It's open source and there is a real huge community around it. So there are a lot of third party tools, uh, like, for example, clients in all kind of different languages in Goland, uh, in JavaScript, uh, and so on, uh, while the official one provided by the Kafka project itself are in Java. Uh, the next technology that I'm going to use during this, uh, during this session is Camel. What is Apache Camel? Uh, I mentioned that uh, the next problem after the ingestion one is the integration. So Camel is a kind of um, uh, Swiss knife of integration in the sense that it's an integration framework that provides a lot of components, uh, more than 300 components, uh, implementing uh, different integration patterns. You can see here the most important book about enterprise integration patterns that are mostly used across messaging systems. Um, and uh, with all these components, you can integrate different systems talking different protocols like UDP, HTTP, messaging protocol like NQTT and NQP, but even cloud um, service providers like uh, all the service provided by AWS, Azure, uh, and so on. The interesting thing is that Camel is re really easy to use because it provides a DSL for writing the flow of your integration, for, so from the source to the destination, with things called route. And uh, it's really easy to write a route. Uh, and I will show you the live code later. Uh, just a little bit on that. Um, I mentioned about integration patterns. These are just a few of the most important integration patterns that are provided by Camel. We are going, for example, to use the aggregator one where you get different messages and you are going to aggregate them in one message in the output. We are going, for example, to use the splitter when you have just one message and then you want to split in different messages on your pipeline. Or there are some other integration pattern like the enricher ones. If you want to enrich your body of the message with some more information, so uh, the, the message is uh, is um, is bringing some information through the pipeline, but then you need to enrich this information with some other information coming, for example, from a database or uh, some other source. The same enriching the header and so on. So. This is just a few of the integration patterns that you can implement using uh, all the Camel component. Last but not least is uh, the, the StreamZ uh, project, uh, which is uh, the one that I uh, work on daily. So StreamZ is an open source project uh, under the CNCF Foundation. Um, and um, this is um, a project that allows to run an Apache Ka Kafka cluster on Kubernetes uh, in a really easy way. So the idea is to... Uh, provide a Kubernetes native way to deploy Kafka because um, deploying Kafka and handling Kafka is not so simple in general on bare metal. So you have to configure all your brokers. You have, uh, I don't know, to uh, change configuration and, there, and then doing the rolling updates on all the brokers. So shut down and start up all the brokers again for having the clusters running. So there are a lot of um, operational things that you have to do when you want to run Kafka. Um, today, running Kafka on Kubernetes is becoming really interesting because uh, uh, most of the workload is moving uh, in the cloud. So a lot of companies have the, the, um, their application running already in the cloud, maybe on Kubernetes or on OpenShift, which is a kind of uh, enterprise edition of Kubernetes provided by Red Hat. Um, so having Kafka running alongside uh, your applications uh, in a Kubernetes cluster can be useful, of course. So uh, it's not so simple. In Kubernetes, you have all the tools that uh, you can use for running Kafka on Kubernetes itself. So you know resources like pods, stateful sets, config map, secrets, and things like that. You can create your entities and you could deploy your Kafka in this way. But it's really not so simple because you have to manage all these uh, uh, custom, so all these resources in Kubernetes to 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 handle your Kafka cluster. So this is where the StreamZ project comes in. Um, it provides a native way of running Kafka on Kubernetes. It means that 
Kafka becomes a Kubernetes custom resource. So Streams work um, works using the uh, operator pattern. So instead of having a human applying your uh, resources on Kubernetes, you have an operator, which is a kind of application that uh, has the knowledge about uh, the application that you want to run. So in our case, instead of having a human having a knowledge about Kafka, you have an application, the operator, having the knowledge about uh, Kafka in order to run Kafka on Kubernetes. So it's going to handle all the kind of problems for you. It means that um, with this operator pattern, uh, the StreamZ uh, project also extends the Kubernetes API through this called um, custom resource definition. So in your API, instead of having just the native Kubernetes resources like pods, stateful set that you already mentioned, you also have a Kafka custom resource. So you can describe a Kafka cluster using a YAML. So you have uh, your YAML, for example, where you can define the Kafka configuration, the listeners for exposing Kafka outside of the cluster, all the, the kind of stuff related to Kafka. So it's um, so you, you can use your knowledge about Kubernetes for running Kafka, not the other way around. Of course, you have to know what you are going to do when you deploy your Kafka cluster. Um, the same, for example, for all the other stuff around the Kafka ecosystem. So um, with Streamzy, you can even um, um, handle the topics and the users. But instead of using the Kafka tools from command line or some UI, you can uh, use the Kafka topic custom resource, the Kafka user custom resource. So there are some other custom resources around um, this ecosystem for deploying, as you already mentioned, the Kafka cluster, like even all the other stuff like Mirror Maker, Kafka Connect, um, even a bridge for bridging HTTP to Kafka um, and so on. So it's a really interesting project. Uh, if you want to run uh, Kafka on Kubernetes instead of doing it by, by yourself, I would suggest to take a look at this project and yeah, just engage with the community. So saying that, uh, let's just jump straight forward into the, the, the demo that I'm going to show. Um, as you can see here, I'm using all the technologies that I mentioned, plus some other technologies. Um, the, the, the pipeline that I'm going to show is about um, Formula One telemetry data. So, of course, uh, I don't have a Formula One car. Uh, it's quite impossible to find, I don't know, on Google, some telemetry data from Formula One world. Uh, but thanks to my son uh, playing to the Xbox, I discovered more or less one year ago that um, this Formula One 2020 game provides all the telemetry data uh, from the race that you are playing through UDP. So what I thought, because I am really passionate about Formula One, is just using all the technologies that I work every day in order to build something in my spare time with, so together with my passion, which is about Formula One. So the first step, uh, let me just describe the pipeline and then they, we will jump into uh, every single piece of this, um, of this um, solution. So the first step was about uh, trying to understand uh, what kind of data the Xbox game provides us. So I wrote uh, a library for decoding the raw bytes coming from UDP and modeling them in Java POJOs uh, in order to use them through the pipeline. So all the car motion data, the driver information, the telemetry data, all the kind of stuff. Um, the Codemaster provides all the documentation for doing that. So every packets and all the bytes, what they represent in order to, yeah, to model all this information in some Java POJOs. Um, the first problem is um, connecting the Xbox, so from UDP to Kafka, completely different protocols, completely different language, right? Using Kafka as an ingestion system. For this reason, I thought that uh, the best way to go was uh, Camel, because with Camel, using the component that allows you to get from UDP um, and then uh, the component writing on Kafka, it's really simple writing a route for moving data from the source, which is Xbox UDP, to Kafka. And I will show a little bit of code about this. Uh, when the messages, uh, all the telemetry data are into Kafka, the first thing that I do is a kind of um, uh, processing in real time. So here, we have a uh, Kafka Streams API based application, which is 
in charge to do a kind of simple processing, just as an example. So processing the, the, the average speed of all the drivers in the last five seconds. So having a five seconds window and you know that uh, the average in the last five seconds was kind of value here. So this is the kind of example of processing that uh, I'm going to show using the Streams API. Then um, what we want to do other than processing, we want to get some uh, insights. So showing, let me say, to the Formula One engineers, the telemetry data um, from the race, so for the driver. Um, and um, this is possible. So it's uh, interesting and really useful to make this kind of different dashboards using another technology, which is Grafana. And Grafana um, provides um, different ways to get uh, data to show on the dashboard. So for example, it provides different data sources. And one of them is InfluxDB. So this is why InfluxDB in, uh, is in this picture. InfluxDB is a time series database, which is really interesting because uh, the telemetry data are really time series data, right? So for each timestamp, you have some information coming as telemetry data from the, the, the cars. But even in this case, we have the problem of connecting Kafka to InfluxDB. How to do that? One more time, Camel. A really simple application uh, that describes the route for moving the data from Kafka to InfluxDB. All this pipeline can be deployed in the cloud running on Kubernetes. And you can see here, this is the, the logo of Streamzy in order to allow you to, to uh, deploy Kafka in this uh, solution in a really easy way. So this is the kind of demo that I'm going to show. Um, before uh, explaining um, um, all the pieces that are making the demo, let me just show you the demo running. So. Um, instead of running the demo uh, in the cloud, so on Kubernetes, on OpenShift, blah, 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 I'm just running it locally in order to, yeah, to, to simplify it. So I have uh, on uh, my side here, it's just not pretty understandable, I guess, but I have just my Zookeeper node running here, my Kafka broker running here. So it's just a simple Kafka cluster with one Kafka broker and one Zookeeper because Kafka in order to work needs Zookeeper today, even if uh, they are getting rid of Zookeeper. Uh, I also have the instances of InfluxDB running and the Grafana running. So just to show what's running on my local uh, um, uh, laptop. Uh, say that we have three different uh, pieces that I want to show, right? So uh, here on my console, I have different tabs. The first one is about running my UDP to Kafka application. So this is the Camel application. I will show the code later in order to move the data from UDP to Kafka. So let's just run this application and hoping that the gods of the demos are with, with us today. The other one is about moving still a Camel application, moving the data from Kafka to InfluxDB. So let's start this application as well. And the last one is the application about running, uh, um, wait, there is some problem here, running uh, the, um, the, 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 the API, the Streams API, the Kafka Streams API based application uh, in order to, yeah, to processing the average speed in the last um, five seconds windows. So all the three applications are running. Now, the main problem is about um, uh, having some uh, data um into the system right i don't have my son here playing in real time but what we can do is using this interesting python tool that i found on internet which is um, um a tool which kind of do the same it's one formula one 2020 telemetry player so it's an application that is able to get uh, uh, the packets from xbox from udp doing the same kind of translations that I did in Java, but then storing, uh, storing all these events in a SQLite database. So what I did previously was uh, storing and recording a race from my son in a SQLite database, which is, it is the Formula One 2020 Baku um, race. And now I can start to just play the, the, the data. So it's kind of reading from SQLite and producing the data on UDP. So what's going to happen is that this application is uh, playing all the data uh, through UDP. So 
uh, we can see, yeah, 500 package sends and blah, blah, blah. Let's move now to the kind of uh, dashboards that I made. So you can see here that some data are coming. Of course, there is a latency uh, due to the laptop power for all the stuff that is running, the, the needs for running in FluxDB and writing data to InfluxDB, reading from, from Grafana, and so on. But you can see here that all the data are coming. So it's going through the entire pipeline from UDP to Camel to Kafka, then uh, from Kafka through Camel to InfluxDB, and then Grafana for showing all this information. So the speed, the, the, the engine revolution, throttle break, uh, the GeForce, uh, even the image on the, on the wings, and information about the fuel, and even events like the speed trap and the fastest lap. This is uh, one of the dashboards that I made uh, with all the information about all the drivers. There is another one that shows in specific information for each driver. So the preferred one, of course, is Charles Leclerc, even if it was not so lucky yesterday, uh, but it was due to Ferrari engineers, I guess. Uh, and um, yeah, this shows kind of information about, uh, yeah, throttle and brake, engine speed, but for each driver, even, the, the lap distance, the fastest lap, the current lap positions, and blah, blah, blah. So all the kind of information that, for example, in Grafana, you can use these uh, overlap cursors to show all this information overlapping that maybe it's useful to understand all the kind of problems that car can have. If you have some kind of speed, then, uh, yeah, correlate to the, to the engine revolution, to the gear and clutch, even the brakes temperature, the position of the, the, of the steering, the, the g forts and all the kind of information about the tires. Uh, say that the last dashboard is about uh, the Streams API application. So this is um, this application. This uh, graph is showing uh, the average speed in the last five seconds windows for each uh, driver. Uh, we will see um, later why there is this kind of spike. So see that uh, every five seconds, there is this kind of spike that we will see why. So this is uh, the kind of uh, demo. Uh, this is the entire solution. Now, let me come back first a little bit on the slides. And then we can see even a little bit of, of the code that is running all this stuff. Um, so let's see uh, the, three, the three main different pieces that make the, the solution, right? So the first one is how we are going to bridge from UDP to Kafka. I'm using Camel. In Camel, there are the so-called route. So the way in this case is having uh, three different routes in order to get information, the getting the data from UDP and writing uh, information to three different topics in Kafka. Why three different topics? Because um, I want to write uh, on a topic with the raw packets, so no processing, no filtering, nothing. Another topic is just for the events. So you saw on the previous dashboard that there is the speed trap and fastest lap. So I am just filtering the events related to speed trap and fastest lap and writing just these events in one Kafka topic. And the last one is about all the information coming from the drivers. Um, this is the, 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 the most complex um, uh, route because um, uh, how the data are coming from uh, the Xbox games are not really good to show in that way. So are not uh, grouped by drivers and things like that. They are frames, each frame, contains uh, all the data for all the drivers, but um, having a kind of a session, there are more uh, frames for each session. So this is why there is there was the need for me for aggregating more frames and then splitting the information for each driver. So this is where um, Camel is really simple to use in order to, 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 to implement all the main uh, integration patterns. So you can see here, a kind of meta language, but let, uh, let me say that it's more or less really the language that I'm going to show later about um, um, how Camel describes the routes. Of course, there are some information about uh, from where should I read, where should I write, and uh, of course, some logic for aggregating, splitting, and filtering. Uh, there is this uh, multicast route at the beginning because uh, in order to have uh, 
uh, to write to, to three different Kafka topics. I needed three different routes, and all the routes need to receive the same data from UDP. So there is a simple route, which is just dispatching all the data to three different so-called direct in-memory channels in Camel, and then using the other routes for, yeah, for writing to Kafka. The next application is the Streams API application. So just reading from drivers topic and writing to another topic where there is the average speed in the last five seconds. Uh, how does it work? So in the Streams API land, um, a Streams API application is described using a topology. A topology is made by different processing nodes. The, um, so uh, on the left-hand side, you have the source node, which is about uh, the source, so from where the application has to read the data, so the driver's topic. And the last one is the sync topic, so after the processing where I should write the data, so the average speed topic. In the middle, there are some steps that I'm going to show in the code, which is about uh, filtering bad messages uh, with no telemetry data, then extracting just information about the driver and the speed, and then processing in a window of five seconds the, the 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 total of the of the um, uh, of the speeds and so the sum and the um, total of samples and then uh, processing the average uh, for the speed. Uh, let me just mention that um, uh, why we saw that spikes in the graph related to the um, to the Streams API application. It was because uh, um, windowing in Streams API can be done in different way. Uh, what I've used uh, is the so-called tumbling window. The tumbling window is a window where you get some samples of your data in five seconds. Uh, it, uh, so it uses these samples in these five seconds windows and then moving in uh, a new window with new data. So not using any kind of data coming from the previous one. So this is why you can see this kind of spike somehow. Uh, there is different windows, like for example, the, the sliding window, which is about um, the window moving uh, slides. So it moves um, not by uh, the hope, which is five seconds, but maybe sliding uh, uh, slower, like each one second. So it means that uh, every time you move the window, you are getting new, new data, but you are even uh, uh, getting rid of old data, but at the same time, you are using uh, uh, some. Uh, data in the middle that were used even in the previous window. So it's more uh, smoothly in this case, the processing on the, um, the windowing side. Uh, the last piece is about uh, uh, writing the data from the Kafka topics to InfluxDB. So even the, in this case, there are three different, let me say, tables in InfluxDB where uh, I'm going to write telemetry, motion, car status, lap data, the average speed, and the events, the last one. Uh, so the routes uh, building the so-called InfluxDB points in order to, yeah, in order to write to InfluxDB. So getting the messages from Kafka and writing these points directly to InfluxDB and making them available to Grafana to show all the data. Let's say this is, of course, uh, the one of the last slides. Uh, but let's see a little bit of code. So the first thing that I can introduce uh, pretty quickly is the code related to my library for decoding uh, the, the raw data coming from the Xbox game. Um, as you already mentioned, um, uh, and I can show uh, here, um, as you already mentioned, the the, um, the code masters, the, so the, the the company who made the, the the Formula One game, provides all the information about the format of the data coming from the game. So it was a matter of reading this documentation and yeah, writing this uh, library here for representing all the packets uh, uh, about I don't know the lab data or the kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, writing and reading all this information from raw bytes uh, to yeah to all the kind of um, Java pojos for uh, modeling the data and then yeah for making the life easier during the pipeline instead of processing raw bytes why not having just pojo uh, in order to yeah to represent I don't know the lap distance the total distance so all the kind of stuff so this is um, where I will not go 
dig into it is just reading robytes, writing fields, uh, and the other way around. So to serialize and deserialize robytes uh, from UDP. Saying that, the most important part, let me just jump to the other Visual Studio Code instance, is the real project that you can find on GitHub. Of course, there are all the readme instructions for deploying the entire pipeline, even locally or even on Kubernetes or OpenShift, and uh, pieces that make the entire application. So for example, let's jump straight to the UDP to Kafka. So the first piece is uh, the application here is about uh, using camel and different routes in camel. So you have yet yeah, you have to create a camel context, which is the kind of context uh, in the camel application for uh, uh, connecting all the pieces in the camel application itself. But the most important thing is creating and adding the routes in camel. So the the um, the flows of your data from the source to the destination. The first one, as you already mentioned, is the dispatch route. So if we jump to the dispatch route implementation, what we have to do in Camel is implementing, so extending this uh, route builder uh, uh, class, and then you have just to configure your route. So as I said in the slides, the language is kind of the same. So you can just say, OK, read from this uh, uh, UDP source. And uh, you can see here that Camel underneath is using Netty. So of course, you can even write your application for reading from UDP using Netty and writing to Kafka using the producer API. But it's really simple in this way using Camel. I'm using the multicast feature uh, and the parallel processing as well in order to do what? The multicasting. So to writing to three different in-channel direct, uh, uh, in-memory direct channels, uh, even yeah, providing just a ID to my route just for logging. At this point, this application is reading from UDP and uh, moving data to these three in-memory channels. On the other side, what I'm going to have? I'm going to have my three different routes for writing to the three different topics. So for example, let's do the, um, the row packets one, which is the simpler one. It's just uh, reading from what the row packets direct in-memory channel and writing to Kafka. So. Here, I am just uh, abstracting how the Kafka configuration is made, because when the route is created, it's getting some configuration. So what's the bootstrap service for Kafka? What is the topic with, where I have to write? But in the end, the, the real configuration that you are, going, you are going to have in Camel is uh, always this one. It's a string where you are saying uh, the source is Kafka. So use as a component the Kafka component. This is the topic where you have to write, in this case, the, the brokers, so the bootstrap server configuration, the client ID, the value serializer, for example, because uh, uh, in Kafka, all the data are just bytes. But if you are coming to exchange, uh, so if you want to exchange POJOs, you have to serialize and deserialize bytes. It's uh, mostly using, so I wrote a serializer, uh, Serializer that is mostly using what I wrote for my library. And then even some information like for SSL, if you want to connect, uh, for example, an OpenShift cluster where the Kafka cluster, uh, cluster is exposed through TLS. So this is where the Kafka configuration is. And yeah, some other uh, uh, DSL words here for logging information about what are the packets that I'm receiving and logging the body if I want, and so on. The other routes is about. Uh, filtering the events. So the same from my in-memory channel events, I'm filtering. So I'm getting all the packets, but I want to filter. So I can just use this uh, filter operation where the packet ID is uh, the event. So it, I can just filter on events. So it means that Camel will, uh, will move the data down to the pipeline just if the filter is uh, true. So just the events. Say that I'm uh, doing a kind of process that I'm using. So the process is a kind of a more general purpose thing, which is in charge of, um, of, um, of enriching, in this case, the message. It's called exchange in Camel. I am adding the header as the key of the events, and then the body, and then writing to my Kafka. The last one, which is uh, the most complex one, is about drivers. As you already mentioned, 
there is the need for uh, first an aggregate operation because how the packets are coming from the, the game are with different frames. Frames with the same ID are correlated and uh, they contains data for all the drivers. So what I'm doing here is using uh, an interesting feature from Camel, which is in charge to watch uh, on a kind of correlation ID, which in my case is the packet ID, and then um, filling uh, this list with all the packet related to the, to the same packet ID. So yeah, I'm aggregating the data. And um, the completion of the operation here is made by, uh, so happens when there is a new correlation group. So when the correlation ID changes. So when I have packet, all the packets, sorry, in the same list, it means that they are coming from uh, the frames with the same packet ID. I can move all this information through the pipeline in, Cam in Camel. And then Camel can start to watch new frames with the, a different and the new packet ID. At this point, I'm going to apply a split where the split operation is uh, here. I have the driver splitters. So I have all the packets and I am splitting information based on the kind of information that are provided by different packets. So the motion, the, sen the session, the lap, dat the lap data and so on, the card telemetry information. And all these information are filling a session that I'm using to, to take in trace of all this data and then, yeah, returning the list of drivers. So I'm going aggregating the frames with all the drivers and then splitting, um, creating new messages, uh, write, write them to Kafka, where, where uh, each message, let me come back to the, uh, where is the driver's route, where um, each message has, has a key, the driver ID more or less, and as a body, the information that I had to to push through the to the um, to the pipeline from uh, yeah from the aggregation. So this is the 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 more complex application. Uh, just a quick look to the influx one, which is really simple. It's going to use just these three routes. We can just see one of them, uh, which is about the getting so from Kafka. So I'm reading from the drivers topic. I am filtering just the, um, the, the, the driver data where the, there are some valid telemetry information um, and then processing them, writing these points uh, to, to InfluxDB. So in the end, after getting information from drivers and writing the field to these points, I can just write to InfluxDB. Again, really simple to move data to InfluxDB here. That's the same for the other stuff. The last piece, and then I will stop talking, I guess. It's about our Formula One streams application. This application is using a kind of the same language as Camel, but this uh, kind of library provided by the Kafka project for, uh, for doing processing in real time. So what it's going to do is, um, is kind of this. We are, um, uh, so we are building our topology that I showed earlier. The topology is made by different nodes. So uh, first, I am, um, I am um, uh, getting the message from uh, my uh, topic. So I am um, uh, configuring and creating a new so-called case stream, where I'm reading from uh, uh, the input topic, which is the driver's topic. So here, for example, I am consuming using uh, uh, the deserializer, where the the, the message key is the driver ID, and they am deserializer a driver POJO in, in uh, so from bytes in in driver in a driver POJO object. I am filtering for telemetry data, and here I am mapping, uh, um, writing to an internal topic having uh, driver ID and the driver re uh, representation. What I want to do here, I want just get the the the, the speed. So what I'm going to do is a mapping of the driver ID and getting just the speed. So I'm writing to a new Kafka topic internal to Kafka Streams API. Uh, I just get rid of all the information about drivers. I want just driver ID and speed. Say that the next step is about uh, grouping so that I can have, uh, I can group all the speeds for each driver in my window, which is the next step. So I'm windowing my groups. So for each, uh, Driver ID, I have all the speeds grouped, but window it by my last five seconds. And last process is about uh, uh, aggregating for um, 
counting and summing the number of drivers and the corresponding speeds, and then having the last step, the last processing nodes about just to doing a division here for, for getting the, the average of my uh, speeds in my five seconds window. Uh, last step will be to write the stream. And I'm doing another step here, mapping uh, uh, to get the key of the messages because when in Kafka streams you do a windowing operation, uh, the final key is a kind of combination of the key of your original message. So in our case, the driver ID plus a timestamp just to identify that your message is inside that window, right? Uh, but I want to write just the driver ID because this is what I want to have in the final topic. So I am just mapping again, having just the key and integer here is my average speed. And finally, closing the topology, writing to the uh, final topic uh, um, outside of, uh, yeah, um, so in Kafka. Uh, and yeah, after you are here designing the topology, so nothing is running, you then build the topology and then you just run your Kafka Streams application, which is will be always running and uh, yeah, doing all the stuff that we have described here through the Kafka Streams API topology. Let me just a little bit come back to the slides just to provide you latest information. I know maybe I'm a little bit late, uh, but we are cl really close. So latest information are just about uh, resources where you can find all this stuff. There is, first of all, a blog post published on the Grafana website where I described what I did and why I used Grafana. The link to my projects, so the decoding library and the Kafka project, yeah, for for uh, for deploying by yourself for this solution locally or not, uh, or in the cloud. There is a video about the demo. Uh, yeah, you can see my son running uh, uh, a real uh, race uh, on Xbox and the dashboards updated in real time. And yeah, the last thing is about some references to all the projects that I use. The reference to the specification from the Formula One 2020 game, but all the links to Kubernetes and OpenShift where you can deploy in a club native way your demo, even about Kafka that I use for ingestion, Camel that I use for integration, uh, StreamZ that I use for deploying Kafka, uh, not in this case because I prefer to run it locally just uh, for simplicity, but it's explained in the documentation how to run and use StreamZ for doing that. And even information about InfluxDB as a time series for getting the data and Grafana for showing all this kind of data. So I guess that that's all it from my side. Thank you very much. I really hope that you enjoyed what uh, I said. And sorry for overwhelming, overwhelming your mind with the tons of information, I guess. <laughs> Great session, Paolo. Mm -hmm. I believe it, that Very you are the only father who asks uh, his uh, child to play Xbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I needed to force, you know, to force my, <laughs> my son to play for my tests just for getting data and sampling. Come on, yeah. your dad needs some data. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can't you if, play you need, if you need other data, we can uh, do a multiplayer game. Yeah. yeah you <laughs> That's want. another way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sergio, uh, because of you, you are a former principal uh, software engineer in uh, uh, McLaren, and uh, you worked on uh, a telemetry uh, application. What do you think about uh, uh, this job done by Paolo? Uh, unmute your mic. Yeah, sorry, that's my mistake, it always do. So, um, yeah, well, yeah, it's quite impressive also because it's actually quite similar to what um, we actually do, we did in McLaren. So, um, streaming service and um, the way that how you can acquire uh, data, uh, this massive amount of data that comes from the car. Uh, because uh, just to give you an example, uh, one single car can have uh, up to like six, probably in the last three years, something has changed, but each car can send something like 60,000 parameters, different parameters. And uh, each parameter can have a different channel. That means that uh, um, one single parameter can have a, 
uh, different frequency where the data is taken from. So let's see the gearbox. You can have a, the one parameter that is the gearbox that give you the, 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 um, the current gear. Uh, and this is taken as a default of a frequency of, let's say, 10 Hertz. But this can change because there can be a different channel that only get activated in a certain uh, position of the track where probably um, is known where the, the, the ups shift and down shift can be more frequent. And then the, in this case, the second channel kicks in and you can have a, a higher frequency where this uh, data is taken and this can apply to a lot of channels so you can have some channels that are which the frequency is is very high so having a system like uh, kafka that is able to move this massive amount of data um, is something that uh, probably a few years ago because let's say that this amount of data 10 years ago was not uh, probably cars 10 years ago was sending like 100 parameters, but in the next uh, 10 years after years, this uh, amount of data increase. Um, and, uh, and so also the software must change and keeps up this. So uh, 10 years ago, we got this software uh, that uh, it was just uh, acquiring data through normal TCP UDP channel and then of course in the last years uh, also McLaren has to keep up and uh, uh, introduce different way to 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 move data um, so yeah I think Paolo perfectly <laughs> nailed <laughs> uh, what is needed to 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 visualize and to acquire data from a Formula One car, and not also because we are talking about motorsport in general, and not only because um, also a company like uh, Space Company, I don't know, I think SpaceX, but I know also other company do telemetry on uh, rockets, so there is a lot of sensor. Uh, bot also uh, has uh, a lot of data coming, I remember, uh, when I was working for McLaren, we got uh, uh, also be also uh, some contact uh, with the uh, America's Cup teams to for telemetry. So yeah, this is something that can be applied for a huge amount of uh, I would say business. I believe that also the approach of Paolo to retrieve, catch the data from uh, a video game is uh, similar to the approach that uh, big company use in the uh, real world. For example, I believe that in McLaren, you maybe you can confirm, uh, there are simulators like video games that uh, can uh, produce uh, the same amount of data that they usually a uh, Formula One car can uh, produce. And then um, uh, the, the application can receive uh, uh, data like uh, in the real, real world. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Uh, so, um, yeah, simulator of each team has a, probably not each team, but most of the team has a, has a simulator, most of the important team has a simulator, and uh, it's like a video game. So uh, you need that your system can ingest different source of data. It can be a Formula One car, it can be a simulator that produce something similar, but most of the time it's not the same. So the output data is the same in the end, are parameters that measure speed, but the way that this different system produce this data can be different. It can be Formula One car that produce quad and uh, or can be a simulator that produce I don't know, a UDP or a JSON. Uh, well, probably JSON, the amount of data will be smaller, but yeah, you need, uh, you have Kafka and then probably you need a lot of uh, connector that you can use to ingest a different uh, source of data. Paolo, about the next steps with your project, uh, I believe that uh, 
that uh, you would like to continue to evolve this uh, this demo because uh, from my side it's it's great well uh i have planned yeah you know i'm working on this on my spare time so i have to find more spare time because i i i started it in august last year because you know when you have an holiday your family has a rest in the afternoon but you don't like resting and uh, and and so you have your laptop there so the next step is just adding uh, more uh, processing application uh i also have uh, yeah maybe uh, uh so if you want to help on this i'm not a web ui developer so i have also a kind of web ui application showing the 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 the, um, the the standings of all the race of all the drivers changing during the race so that you, yeah you you can see the overtakes and when a driver comes on I don't know another position and yeah getting position but it's just yeah a blank uh great web ui with just blank background and just all the names of drivers changing position when the 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 underlying processing is just processing their change of positions the other thing that i'm working on is even um another example of um, kafka streams api application for showing the best sectors uh, in a lap so processing uh, you know when you have a race and you have a lap there are some three different main sectors in a lap so you want to know for example in real time who is the best driver to have got the best time on that sector that could be the even on the best lap but even could be the best sector not in the best lap so to know some more information some more insights but yeah if you have any kind of idea it would be great even uh, yeah, even for an example question. yeah sure yeah one question is uh, it's very great to see that no machine learning currently is involved in in this uh, yes exactly service. what's yes. about adding it yeah mm -hmm. and I, yeah i i would like to so i don't know more about machine learning so i would like to use kind of for example tensorflow things for for knowing uh, what how a driver is behaving or things like that uh yeah it, it will be a great uh, um, integration i have to learn this new kind of technologies or maybe working i don't know with, with you guys if you know this kind of technologies right i believe that uh, some things like forecasting or other um, machine learning models could be applied easily on your project uh, because also because looking at your code is uh, it's a great code <laughs> so compliments um, during your session your session uh, uh, I uh, me and Gianni discussed uh, via chat uh, that your code is great for a demo you know usually on github uh, a lot of demo uh, the level of the code is not uh, as a yeah, as yours. Compliments. Uh, okay, Gianni. So um, we worked together with uh, uh, machine learning, deep learning uh, applied to uh, many different type of data, from uh, uh, video processing uh, to tabular data. Uh, what do you will add to this project? I think these are mainly timely time series, as uh, Paolo mentioned. So probably. We can try to figure out if, uh, like uh, AWS is doing in the real Formula One uh, sports, try to predict uh, overtakes, try to predict the strategy. It's all, all things that are possible. And, and given that uh, we have a video game as a source of truth, it's very easy to collect a lot of data that is already labeled if you, if you need it. So we know when, uh, when a car, where a car is in the truck, where are the others, without needing to use video processing to achieve uh, and get it from a live video stream. So this is amazing for building the what we also were looking for uh, in the past in some projects for the synthetic data. Video games are a very, uh, very interesting source of uh, data and metadata that is very suitable for machine learning approach. So uh, a question I have is how big is the a single race uh, dump. Uh, uh, you, know, you, you would collect all the data in SQLite, so I don't think it's very big. How is it? Let me double check on my screen here. How big is uh, one of them? Uh, well, uh, well, one of them. Yeah, it, it can be even two gigabytes of data. 
It depends. For, because... for how many cars? One car? No, 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 for all the cars, but just for five or six laps. Because, you know, when you play, okay. you don't run the full race, right? With 70 laps. Just for five, so... six laps. Yeah, it can be from um, uh, 500, just few laps uh, to two gigabytes, I see here. So I can't imagine in uh, during a, a real race yeah. how many gigs. <laughs> I think that they are terabytes. I I would say. Like, uh, Sergio, right, you Sergio? can uh, can answer, or is yeah. uh, under yeah, NDA? It's, it's it's a lot of data. So I can tell you that uh, that um, uh, let's say that with the best kind of compression. I remember we were writing data as binary. And we are writing data as because you know some parameters are um, can be double, some long, some short, some bytes. So we are writing the exact uh, um, data type in this file. And uh, each car for one session, so for like entire race, it can be like two gigabyte, three gigabyte. And uh, and of course, when you instead when you don't use any kind of compression, like you start writing let's say you want to write a json file of the same then you can imagine that uh, we are talking about uh, yeah recently we we are exploring some uh, optimal way to store tabular data or time series data and we came up with the parquet data format so yeah, i remember once i put all this data in uh, um influx uh, and uh, it starts getting getting quite uh, scary <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, I think um, um, I agree with Jan about the, the, the um, uh, data prediction and the TensorFlow. This was actually before I was leaving the motorsport uh, world. That one of the things that was in the like in the dream uh, 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 in the desiderata of uh, Formula One team. So, uh, do we have time? Or uh, sorry, because maybe I yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so you know that that the data that is acquired at the track is just a very small amount of the data. Then, on this session, is um, is then post in post processing. There is a lot of data that uh, that is generated starting from the data that's acquired from the from the car. So from these sixty thousand parameters, uh, um, there are some uh, models that uh, the engineer run to generate other hundred thousand of parameters. I usually is use MATLAB, so usually. Uh, companies like McLaren gives the ability to extract this data and uh, you can put in MATLAB and put it back uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in in McLaren Viewer. So, um, of course, MATLAB has some good functionality, but in terms of data prediction, probably the, 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 we are not in, there is not all these possibilities. So, yeah, I remember that one of the, 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 the things that uh, it was on the table was to give the possibility to get this data out of, uh, it, can, it can be also live, but I'm not talking about only historic data. So it's not only, it can be also connected to this Kafka streaming, that, uh, that live you can take this data and uh, you can process some model in real time and you can put the data back in Kafka. So in your viewer, you can see some prediction as the car is running on the track. Okay. Now we are at the end of this uh, uh, first set chat. If anyone have any question, please leave a comment. Uh, we will ping Paolo uh, to answer <laughs> later. And uh, uh, thank you again, uh, Paolo and uh, Sergio. Thank you very much, guys, for having yeah me and Sergio as well. Thank you. Let's let's stay in touch because it's really interesting to do these machine learning things on on this project. So, yeah. Yeah, let's discuss. Yeah. Thank That's you very much it. again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. You. bye. 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 bye.